welcome to Time to Talk. I'm R.G. Holliman, and today is Wednesday, December 12th, 2018, and we are glad that you could join us once again. Uh, I am definitely enjoying the weather, meaning no snow. It's okay that it's cold because I know how to dress for that and keep going. So, but it's nice not to have to drive through snow and walk through snow and do all of those things. As we know, the holiday season is upon us. Christmas is coming and Kwanzaa is coming. And it's a time to be thankful. And so what I'm doing today is letting all of my crew members know how thankful I am for each one of them. I've been doing this show now coming up on 30 years, and I couldn't do it without my crew. They're all volunteers, and they're all dedicated, and I appreciate them so much. So that's what I'm gonna do today, is to honor each one of my crew members. And I'm gonna start with Doug Roland Stiles, our director of Time to Talk. How you doing, Doug? I am blessed, thank you. Mm hmm Well, yes, you definitely are. <laughs> you have been with Time to Talk now how many years? Nine or ten. I think it's ten or maybe even a little bit more than that. And how did you start with Time to Talk? There was a young man here uh, who was um, um, a volunteer who wanted to learn um, television. Uh, here at um, GRTV uh, back in 2004, 5, 6, 7, back in there. And his name was Mitchell Harbison. And uh, he was a prodigy. They say, they say he started doing television here when he was 12. Mm -hmm. And um, um, when I came uh, to a GRTV, um, he was in the middle of that. And um, he was doing your show. He was mm -hmm. your director at the time. Yes. And we met because I was brought here by a ministry uh, which um, wanted me to put the ministry on television. So I came here to learn how to do television. Imagine 55 years old coming to learn how to do television. You know, what's, what's, <laughs> it's what's never the, too late what, to learn. What's the joke on that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, was, I saw him going back and forth, and so we met and we, we talked. He asked me to work on the show, and I was introduced to you as well mm -hmm. at, at that time by, uh, I believe it was Maurice Preston? I'm sorry, what? Maurice Preston? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he was doing your show. Right. And um, because I met him and met Mitch, I ended up becoming involved. Mm -hmm. Well. Things happen and time goes by and um, I ended up being assistant director. And uh, through a series of events, I, I became, through 2010, 11, and 12, I became the acting director. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is how I got involved with uh, mm -hmm. Time to Talk. And uh, you, you've been dedicated ever since, not only to Time to Talk, but to my other projects that I work on, like Acapella mm -hmm. Gospel Music Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, you've recorded that program that we have every September 11th mm -hmm. in recognition of the heroes of 9-11. Yes. We have everybody come and sing Acapella because on that day, when it happened. We couldn't pay the musicians. You couldn't, <laughs> if you were out there, mm -hmm. there was no time to go get your instrument. So we it's focus true. on the that's most true. beautiful instrument mm -hmm. and that's the voice. Yeah. And not only did you, do you help us record that, but you sung in the program as well, uh, every year and everything like that. And then also pretty much anything that I need you to do to support something that I'm doing, I gotta say, you, you've been there, you've been helpful, and, and you do it. I, I get on you a lot, you know, and talk to you real hard all the time. Well, RJ, I appreciate uh, you uh, saying that and appreciating what I do, but um, raking your leaves is kind of hard on my back. What's that? Raking your leaves. 
raking my leaves. Yeah, that was a joke. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> He'll be here all night, y'all. Okay. Not at this rate. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes I gotta have my uh, leaves raked and my snow shoveled and, oh, never mind, all yeah, that never stuff. Mind. All that stuff, but um, but we've had some interesting shows, and not, and not only are you in the back directing the shows, but uh, you get involved in um, whatever the show is about. Mm -hmm. Many times you're interested in our guests. Well, all the time, I think. Some of your guests have very compelling stories, mm -hmm. and some of the things that I hear them say are remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that they have survived some of what they've been through is really I think stories that need to be told. Yes, yes. Well, um, so is there anything else you want to share, Doug? Whatever, whatever, whatever you want me to share. I mean, um, um, do you have any more questions? <laughs> I have plenty of questions. Oh, but, very good. Uh, but I just want to thank you for all that you've done for Time to Talk and all that you continue to do. And um, this is for you, um, for just your achievement with Time to Talk. And then we'd like you to sing something for us. I'm going to have to sign that for you a little later. It would appear so, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate being able to do this uh, at this time in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I never expected to do television, mm -hmm. but I spent 20 years um, on a quest to get into radio, and uh, that actually never happened. I did a little radio here and there, and I had a couple of uh, opportunities to work for a station, a couple of stations and get paid for it, and they were marvelous experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but when I went to radio school, they were just introducing television. Mm. I didn't want it. I walked away from television for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now look. And now look at you. You walked right back. <laughs> I mean, you know. You walked and right there, back there, into and, it. In reality, there's a difference between this community access television and the commercial world. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm grateful that I've had a chance uh, to learn what I've learned in community television. Otherwise, um, you know, I never, never would have known that I was actually able to do, make paint the pictures mm -hmm. and, and so forth. I've had a couple of setbacks. They changed the computer program that we used to edit and that kind of set me back four or five years because I was becoming pretty proficient at it um, with the other program, but the new program, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning how to, how, to, how to make things look like I want them to look. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, it is, uh, I consider myself to be uh, privileged. It's been an honor to know you. Oh, thank as you. Well. Thank you. Um, I could tell you some stories about um, you my better life. not <laughs> <laughs> about life before before RG. <laughs> um, but uh, you have others that you're going to bring on tonight, and I'm not going to take up all the time. Okay. Well, thank you, Doug. Again, thank you. And uh, as I mentioned, you can sing. And um, there was a beautiful Christmas song that you sung for us a couple of years ago on mm -hmm. this show. Oh, Holy Night, mm -hmm. and I was like, Doug, that's so beautiful, mm -hmm. but how in the world do you know all the birds to that hard song? Uh, it's a beautiful song, but, uh, but I'm gonna let you sing it, and after that, then we're our next crew member is gonna be Pinda Childry, mm -hmm. and after her, it's gonna be Chris Kotcher, and then I'll, I'll mention who else is gonna be next, but mm -hmm. right now, um, I'm gonna let you tell it ahead of time. How, how do you know the words to this song? Um, I was uh, put in the choir in my mother's church when I was seven years old. And that became uh, permanent mm -hmm. all the way through my childhood in, in the church. Mm -hmm. Then when I left my mother's church and went to the church of my second experience, which is the, the church that I chose to go to, um, that momentum continued. There was inertia and I joined the choir in that church and um, I had a chance to, there was a preacher, the minister, the pastor of that church was, uh, was named uh, Dr. Uh, Charles Gilchrist Adams and um, in that process I had a chance to do 
something interesting uh, because, you know, culture has changed over the last 40 years, but we had much of European culture in the black community in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And um, a lot of things that people would call high class stuff, we, we were into poetry and opera and art and acting and, you know, a, a lot of different values than we see today. And I had a, the, uh, the opportunity to sing opera right next, standing on the stage right next to uh, Charles Gilchrist Adams. And um, um, I had a lot of exposure. So over the years, I've sung certain things over and over and over again. And that's how I know the words uh, to some of the songs. Okay. And I don't usually sing without words, you know, because um, this can fail. <laughs> You know, depending on okay. whether I have a headache, uh, whether I'm, whether my blood sugar is off, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, will you sing it for us now? Um, oh, Holy Night. How much are you going to pay me? What do you usually get paid? I usually get paid a bunch of zeros. Well, same thing tonight. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Doug Rowland Styles. Thank you, Doug, for everything you do. You can go right ahead to the mic. I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday. Happy holidays, yes. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth the thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh no We're thanking uh, my crew today and recognizing them for everything that they do for Time to Talk. We're going to be right back with Pinda Childry, but we're going to take this break. You're watching Time to Talk. I think public access is accessibility, especially when we're talking about GRTV. It's a public format. Um, it's available to just about anyone, especially like local to Grand Rapids, but it's accessible, it's inclusive, it's educational, and it does something for the greater public good. Public access um, in Grand Rapids is so vital to our community. It helps make us vibrant because there's so much going on and there's so much talent here in Grand Rapids and there's so many viewpoints and so many services. So having public access, that's an opportunity for people to become aware of what's going on. It also gives people an opportunity to learn. Where else can you go and learn how to do television and actually put 
your show on the air. What I like about public access is you get programs on that you wouldn't get with yet regular broadcast or cable TV. And you would think with all the cable and, and broadcast stations there are, everything would be covered. But people who can't attend these can still watch them on TV. They kind of invite people in and they want to help them in any way through like creating and providing material for them, providing equipment for them. The public can come and access our facilities here at GRTV at the Community Media Center. They can access our time. You don't have to pay to put your program on air or to come on air and say something. You cannot do that on commercial television. You don't have to own your own computer or have your own channel or have your own camera or whatever. And I'm speaking kind of specifically about GRTV at this point, but like they provide a lot of that stuff. So it really is open to anyone. I produce a weekly comedy show called The Sunday Night Funnies. It's a live stand-up comedy show that I've been doing for eight years over at the Riverfront Hotel. It's nice because uh, I've learned how to do shoots and edit the TV show and if you look at the show when it first started to where it's at now the quality has gotten a lot better and I want to continue to improve that. I have had my show on the air for more than 25 years. Our motto is education, information, and positive entertainment. Hello, welcome back to Time to Talk. Today is December 12th. 2018 and it's the holiday season and we're just taking this time to show how grateful we are to our crew members here at Time to Talk and our next crew member is Sister Pinda Chaudhary. Pinda is good mm -hmm. to have you on Time to Talk. Well thank you for having me again. Yes. It's always a surprise. Always when a surprise. I here it's Pinder, you're going to be on the show. Yes, yes. And I, I try to notify you ahead of time, but but anytime I do, it's like, okay, come on, Pinder, you're going to be on the air. You're, you're always so welcoming and willing to do it. Um, and I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. And you've been working with Time to Talk now about two, three years? Yeah, this is about the third season. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what are you responsible for? Well, making sure that you look nice for Thank one you. thing. Appreciate it. you look it. nice. <laughs> I, I, I like your gaily. Mm -hmm. Yes. It looks very nice all the way from South Africa. Yes, very, yes, I appreciate nice. that. Yes. That, yes, that, yes. that makes it very Africa. special. Sometimes Fenda is wearing something, I'm like, I got a hand in it right now for the show. <laughs> well, again, another one of my one of your African yes. hats. And yeah. also, uh, Pinda uh, is the floor director, helping me keep up with the time and what's yes. next and what's happening next and what do I need to know and somebody's on the phone. But not only that, she's one of our producers as well, mm -hmm. which means that she helps me get guests. I'll say, yes. uh, well, who do you know? Who do you think would be interesting? She'll come up with this long mm -hmm. list of very interesting people, uh, and and they've been on, you know, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that. And that that takes up, uh, that helps me because it frees up a lot of my time. Because mm -hmm. when I used to try to do it all, get the crew, get the guests, get the topic, all of those things. It's kind of rather time consuming. So you've really helped me to be more organized. And I remember when I saw you when we were both getting some produce and everything. Thank and you. then you're a member yes. also of the Potts family. And I yes. love all the Potts and know, know mostly all of them. And um, we were getting some produce. And you were like, I'd like to work with you on their shows sometime. Now, if any of you know me, you only got to say that once to me, okay, because I'm going to hold on to that. So I was like, okay, when, when can you start? Um, you said, just give me a call. So I gave mm -hmm. you a call, and you've been here ever since. Well, you know, before that, we had talked in a meeting out in the community, and I was trying to get my children to come on and be a part of the show so they 
can come down and learn the cameras, which has always been my interest. And I can never get them to come down because of a conflict of their school schedules. So once I became free, um, part of my, my uh, retirement goal was to do some volunteering. And I thought this would be a good start. I always had an interest in cameras, learning them. Um, I always held the camera, I always took pictures of everybody. And this was my opportunity to come and learn a little bit about these professional cameras mm -hmm. and, you know, work with a beautiful crew here on Time to Talk. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the opportunity to just be a part of the show. Yes. And yes. we appreciate you being a part of the show. And I appreciate your, your spirit as well. It's like when you get here, then that, that just really lifts me up. I'm always well, looking you. for Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, you're welcome. And I thank you because that just lifts me up. Okay, everything's going to be good. Pendant's mm -hmm. here and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep on track with everything. And you're our in-house photographer as well, like making sure that we get all the pictures of who's on the show, who's been on the show, um, and putting them on Facebook or sending them to me where I can put them on Facebook. And mm -hmm. you take good pictures too. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, with your phone. With my phone, and <laughs> with they come out phone. really nice. Your phone. Oh, I gotta get a what, good camera. What kind is it? It's just a Samsung yeah. 7. It is so sharp though. It is, it, it is. It is very sharp. And now that you're retired, in addition to time to talk, what else do you do? Well, many things. Um, more importantly, I take care of my grand blessings. Mm -hmm. And I, I never thought that I would be a grandmother. I mean, here I am, a, I'm a grandmother. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my retirement goal, and it happened before I retired. Mm -hmm. So that's first and foremost with me, mm -hmm. retiring, um, doing a little traveling in the country, outside of the country, um, volunteering here on Time mm -hmm. to Talk, yeah. all part of my retirement goals. And I wanted to do a fancy quilt, so I did that, mm -hmm. and now it's time to make new goals oh. for 2019. Okay. And um, one of your goals, as you mentioned, was to travel and to go to South Africa. And I just admire you for that because you've been now, what, twice? Yes, I've been mm -hmm. twice. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so that's quite an experience right there. That was a huge experience, thanks to Sister Bukawa who allowed me to go and stay with her family for two months, 2016, mm. two months, 2017. And not only that, visiting other countries while there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm. part of my many travels was hopes to go to various parts of, uh, mm. other parts, I should say, of Africa. Yeah. That had to be so interesting. How very, you, very rewarding. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you do for the holidays? Well, every day is a holiday. I brought my, well, let me, let me go back a little bit. Traditionally, with my parents, we celebrated probably all of the holidays. And... It's like when you have another knowledge of, you know, different things, you tend to move toward that knowledge. When my daughter was three, she was going to preschool uh, in Detroit. And she came home one day and told me that the teacher told her that Santa Claus was going to come to her house down her chimney. Mm -hmm. And right then, I told her that wasn't going to happen mm -hmm. and that I would be talking to her teacher. So I went to school to talk to her teacher to let her know that we celebrate every day as being a holiday. We find something to celebrate every day, and that's what I was teaching her early on. Mm -hmm. And then I learned about 
Kwanzaa and um, start going to Detroit's Kwanzaa and just start reading up on uh, Dr. Milana Karanga's goal and dreams and aspirations for all of us celebrating Kwanzaa. So during the holidays, I started celebrating Kwanzaa with them. And it would just be me and my daughter at first. And then, like I said, we started going to the community Kwanzaa's. And then I moved back to Grand Rapids when my daughter was seven. And I believe that was the first year that they had a Kwanzaa here. Um, I, I never seen another one of that magnitude back then. My daughter's 38 now. And again, we moved here when she was seven. So in 31 years, I have never seen a Kwanzaa of that magnitude here in Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. However, every year I've celebrated Kwanzaa with my home, inviting friends, inviting relatives in to, you know, help plumb the line about Kwanzaa, the Nguzo Saba, which is the seven, seven principles. And so again, that's what I do for the holidays. I celebrate Kwanzaa, but at the same time, I try to find something to celebrate each and every day. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Kwanzaa, and are you going to celebrate it this year? I am. I am. We're going to be at Life Quest over on Fifth Street. I really don't know the address per se at this particular time, but shout out to Jerry Bishop for always opening up his doors, allowing us to come in to and celebrate to the Kwanzaa. It is a community Kwanzaa. Anybody can come. It's a great opportunity to learn about Kwanzaa, the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles. And it's just, you know, a beautiful part that I feel like black people as a whole and any other race who want to learn about it is a great opportunity to come and learn about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. And uh, anything else you want to share with us? I just want to say again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of your show and team here. And it's just an honor. Mm -hmm. All respect due to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you and honor you as well uh, for being a part of Time to Talk, a vital part uh, of Time to Talk. You know, each person has where they fit and you definitely fit right in and we appreciate that and want to recognize you and as I told Doug I gotta still gotta sign this okay, for you. Okay well thank but, you so uh, much. I but, feel honored. Okay but thank, thank you. you so much for everything that you've thank done you. and that you continue to do for Time to Talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you Pinda Children. All right and we're mm -hmm. going to take another break and we'll be back with Chris Crutcher. Okay you're watching Time to Talk and we're just thanking all of our volunteers, and yes, yes, they're volunteering and working very, very hard to make this show right, and I appreciate it. We'll be right back. WYCE is a world of music. We aim to shine a light on underserved musical artists in a non-commercial format with no advertisements. Volunteers come in to create personalized music programming that broadcasts over the air at 88.1 FM to West Michigan and via the internet to listeners all over the world. These listeners sponsor our efforts, keeping WYC independent and community owned. Musicians use the station to broaden their audience and build support for their latest projects by submitting their music to be included in our broadcast and performing live in studio. Businesses find their customers through underwriting, Nonprofits inform the community to their mission, and listeners stay informed about local events. We believe that music is a powerful force that creates quality relationships in our community, that speaks to our emotions, and provides the soundtrack to our lives. Comcast Cable 25. Now, I will say this, that on December 26th, we're going to take a 
vacation, a holiday vacation for that particular day. And then we, if the Lord says so, we will join you again in the new year, 2019. Next, I'd like to introduce to you Chris Kotcher. Chris is actually on the staff here of GRTV, and he uh, is here full time, right, Chris? For the yeah, most part? Yeah. I, uh, I'm full time with uh, the organization of the Grand Rapids Community Media Center, which right. GRTV is a, pro is a part of. So um, yes. I'm actually part of my week is here. And I also work at over at uh, Wealthy Theater. Uh, yes. And a lot of people don't know that the Wealthy Theater is mm -hmm. a part of Community Media Center, which is the overall umbrella for GRTV, WYCE, and Wealthy Theater, and um, oh, I'm missing something. Um, we said WYCE, there's an education department, there's uh, the Rapidian. Uh, yeah, that's which, it. Yeah. That's what I was missing. And yep. so what's your, your title here, Chris? Oh, man. It's a little nebulous. I think right now the, the title is uh, uh, Video Services Specialist. Okay. We'll take that. You'll take it? <laughs> okay. We'll take Video Services Specialist. Here at GRTV. I, yeah. I, I appreciate Chris so much because he's a vital part of Time to Talk. You're a vital part of Time to Talk as well. Um, and then I will tell Chris, this is what my vision is mm -hmm. for the show. And he helps me to kind of get that organized and make that happen. Uh, I can say it on paper and then, but you actually help it to come to life, you know? And I, I appreciate that and I appreciate your attitude. You're always so positive and um, liking the shows that we do. I get that feeling that, you know, you like the shows, you appreciate them, you want them to go well. Um, and I'm telling you, I've worked with some people that they could care less and they just didn't have the attitude that you would want them to have. And um, so I like that. I like that you, you have that positive attitude, Chris. Um, oh, thank you. What did you do before you came to the Community Media Center? Before I came to the Community Media Center, I was uh, in school at Grand Valley uh, studying film and video production. Go Lakers! That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so I had just graduated and moved downtown uh, because uh, Grand Rapids seemed like uh, an interesting place to be and, and do some work. and and get involved in more video production or broadcast or film, what, what have you. And uh, there was a job opening here, um, so I, I applied and got involved right around, right around that time. And I started part-time, uh, so initially I was only here like a couple days a week. Uh, and then over time I got involved more and more and understood more and more, like that umbrella, what you're talking about, like, oh, it's WYCE, there's a cool community radio station, oh, there's Wealthy Theater, this is like another free speech platform, but for people who put on events, you know, and you can do anything there mm -hmm. and, uh, and stuff like that. And, I, and that was something that I always thought was really powerful, sort of mm -hmm. giving somebody the platform to get their message out there and show them how to do it. And, um, and so many interesting organizations and people like what you said about, what Doug said about the guests that you have come in and share their stories. I think it's, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really powerful stories out there in the community, and mm -hmm. it's something my dad always said that everybody has a story, and yes. I think uh, your show is a good example of that when you bring somebody on to talk about and, talk about it. And <laughs> at least here at uh, the community media center, you can have a story, but you can share your story, or learn how to produce that story, or help someone else produce their story. Where else can you do that? You know, it's a jewel. You know, it's a jewel the internet, that, that I guess. We have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and but it's different. It's, uh, it, it's, yeah. There, there's not a lot of uh, places like this, at least from what I know of other community uh, mm -hmm. media organizations around the country. I know this one is is, yes, is a exactly. bit of a standout. Mm -hmm. I know when people come to Grand Rapids and come to the community media center, they're like, what? You all have all that going on, mm -hmm. you know, and some of them have much bigger cities than we do, but they don't have that access for the public. And there is a difference between public television and 
public access. Can you talk a little bit about that? Public television and public access? The difference. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Well, I guess the I guess what you're talking about is like the difference between PBS yeah. and the difference between GRTV and yeah. and, and PBS is uh, I think a bit a bit more um, controlled in the content that they put out. Uh, there's and they're they're based off of donations. Mm -hmm. uh, GRTV right now is uh, based off of uh, franchise fees. So anybody who has Comcast, a small part of their their bill uh, is uh, legally uh, required to go towards a free speech platform mm -hmm. of a public access station mm -hmm. um, and it's to uh, um, and I think that was started I don't have the numbers right but it was started maybe 30 years ago and GRTV was one of the first access stations within this area mm -hmm. uh, to take advantage of that and and really propel it forward um, so this is a bit more of a level free platform playing fields and we don't uh, we don't screen anything so if somebody walks in with the DVD and turns it in and fills out a form we don't look at it we just we just put it on the air mm -hmm. uh, it, it really is uh, kind of a bullhorn for people who have a story or a message that they want to get out there or get out to a new audience mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I know gets talked about a bit um, yeah because like if you're putting something out online or if you already have an audience, sometimes GRTV or the Media Center, I think, is a way to reach new audiences that you mm -hmm. wouldn't reach otherwise um, and uh, cross paths with people like you and Doug and all the other people who come through here that um, you wouldn't meet otherwise, which is kind of cool. Yeah, um, it helps people who have a different viewpoint or it doesn't have to be a different viewpoint, just a certain viewpoint at all. No one's going to say, we don't like that. <laughs> you can't say that here. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever it might be, somebody can do a regular show every week, every other week. When I started, we were doing every week. Um, and, you know, people, my volunteers and everything were very dedicated. They were there every week. And um, I think we only shut down the show, canceled it about three times over the 30 years, you know, and... Because of um, weather or... Uh, for or a snow like blizzard. Yeah. It was a snow right. blizzard, and maybe another time it was something else, but people have rode their bicycles here, mm -hmm. come from as far away as, as Rockford and Baldwin and all these places just to help us here on Time to Talk. Great dedication great dedication yeah. and then many other people have their shows here too and I appreciate you Chris for helping us to do what we're doing you know where we have the volunteers but we need staff members to help us get things together and make sure things happen and in a crisis you you have mm -hmm. pinch hit for us uh, and we we appreciate that as well. Anything else you want to share with us? Just, just doing my job, ma'am. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. that's all it is. That's what we're here for. Yeah. You know what I mean? To okay. help, help make okay. the shows happen. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. You sound like a fireman or a policeman, which maybe sometimes you got to be around here. <laughs> Putting out fires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. uh, yeah. We appreciate that. Next, we're going to have yeah. another staff member from GRTB, Willie Will Mosqueda. And we want to thank you, Chris, for helping us on Time to Talk and being a vital oh, nice. part of it. And we hope that you will continue to work with us. And as I told Doug and Penda, I'll have to sign this for you. But we appreciate you that. Sign it right now. I'll get a pen. <laughs> yeah. we'll, do, we'll do it live on air. Oh, thank you very uh, yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Nice. We can do that. Um, That's so, very kind of you. Thank you very much. You're, yeah, thank you, Chris. You're, you're a good one, R.G. Appreciate it. Um, so next we're going to have Will Mosqueda. We're going to take a break and bring Will up. Am I over? Is yeah, my you're part done? over. I Unless you've got something else to say. What's been your favorite show? Uh, not favorite show, but <laughs> what have you liked about <laughs> being a part of Time to Talk? Oh, time, what have I liked about being a part of Time to Talk? Um, variety of stories, listening to Doug sing. <laughs> okay. That was pretty good. All right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Chris. Cool. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. thank you, Argy. Thanks okay. for all you do.
You're watching Time to Talk. We're honoring our crew members today, and we'll be right back. The Wealthy Theater is Grand Rapids' local movie theater and performance center. Since 1998, it has been a host to nationally touring music groups, local theater performances, and a variety of community events. Today, the Wealthy Theater is not only a landmark community treasure with historic significance, but a pioneer in the infusion of technology and traditional theater. Underneath the elegance and classic sensibility that defines Wealthy Theater, there is a matrix of new technologies. The theater is completely digital and outfitted with cameras and microphones for concerts, theater and comedy troupes, speakers and lecturers, and so much more. Experience all that Wealthy Theater has to offer. And bring a friend. Be surprised by the Wealthy Theater. Welcome back to Time to Talk. I'm R.G. Holloman, and we're celebrating the holiday season and being thankful for my crew because I couldn't do it without them. Been doing it now, coming up on 30 years in wow. January, and I just couldn't do it without all of my good team members. And another good team member is Will Mosqueda. Am I saying it right? It Musqueda, but it's close Musqueda. enough. Musqueda. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, Will, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you and, for having me. Um, what is your proper title here at the Community Media Center? I am a video service specialist for okay. GTV. Okay, just like Chris, you're a video services specialist. And a and theater tech over at Wealthy, too, actually. Uh, a what? A theater tech over at Wealthy Theater too. When they okay, need me. cool, cool. And um, one of the things that Will does is he gets my set ready, <laughs> and I like that. I love this, Will. Um, <laughs> and different times I'll send an email, say this is what the show is about. This is how many people we're going to have. This is the setup. But then Will makes things happen in the sense of making it look really, really nice. <laughs> and I'm like, something that I didn't even think of. And I'm like, I like that. <laughs> I didn't know I wanted that, but that's what I wanted. That's awesome. exactly what I wanted. And I appreciate that, Will. I love doing so, it. Yeah, yeah, you're a good designer. <laughs> Is that in your, your background? Uh, like set I, design? No, specifically, no. I would say just kind of a general creative streak it runs through my family and mm -hmm. that I can express in different ways and the set designs is usually it's just another one another way of me uh, expressing myself creatively mm -hmm. how long have you been working here at community media Center? not even a year yet I started in March so it's almost under a year mm -hmm. so I'm okay. still new and it's been a few months mm -hmm. since you've been working with time to talk and we've just really en enjoyed you and everything. You just jump right in and, and get right in there and do what has to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I appreciate that because so many times somebody could just say, that's not my job. I'm not going to do it. But you jump right in there and we appreciate that. Well, we're on the same boat here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Uh, what did you do before you came to Community Media Center? Before, I was a groundskeeper and an AV tech over at Westminster Presbyterian Church for, oh, I'll say six years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you like about being in broadcasting? I would say there's a certain type of magic to it, a magic that I didn't even knew existed until I started working in it, really. There's just something about the lights. There's something about the cameras. There's just something about all of it that just comes together and creates this voice, creates this visual thing, really. And it's all connected and it's just magical, I think. What, what interested you in working here at the Community Media Center? Well, actually, it was the people. Um, 
I had worked with Chris before on plenty of other projects, and you know he's my friend too, so he was here. Um, Sarah Vesley, who's now director of the Wealthy Street Theater, uh, she works here, she's my friend. It was really just the people. Um, and as far as the job went, you know, I thought I could do it. I read the description when they posted the job online. I was like, oh, I can do that. But mainly it was just the people I could be working with. Mm -hmm. You get to meet a lot of people, yeah, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, people all over in the community. And it's surprising, too, because if you had asked me uh, not even two years ago if I would actually love being involved in community affairs, I, I would have had some choice words for you. <laughs> uh, I, it's been kind of a recent transformation um, into the way I am now, but I just love how engaged I can get with the community. Mm -hmm. It's something I never knew I would actually like, but I love it. Yeah, yeah. And um, the Wealthy Theater uh, has so much to offer. It's, first of all, it's a beautiful venue, mm -hmm. and it's a part of Community Media Center, which, as I said before, a lot of people don't know that we're all connected and everything. But, you know, there was a time when that was just a run-down building that just sat there for years and years and years and years and years. And... Um, Way back, I used to be on the board of the Community Media Center, and that was a part of what we wanted to do. We're like, we're going to buy that building, renovate it, and make something out of it. And it is just absolutely wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful. I've put on, um, I've been in plays there, and then I've also put on events. I've put on a cappella gospel music fest there, and it's just so enjoyable. And what an asset to the Grand Rapids community to be right dead smack in the heart of the community theater. If you look around, um, we, there's, we really don't have a lot of places like this around in the country. The CMC just as a whole and all the entities that are involved mm -hmm. with it. I mean, this it's not a rare thing, but it's kind of an uncommon thing to mm -hmm. see something like this in cities. Mm -hmm. Can you talk uh, a little bit more about some of the things that go on at Wealthy Theater? And, and the public can access it as oh, well. Yes, they can rent out the theaters. We have the main theater. We have the Cohen Micro Cinema. There's the Annex, just a block down. We have a public meeting space up on the second floor. Um, it really, you don't need to just have it for movies or plays. You can put on events. You can put on classes. You know, we have a lot of classes that go through there. We have a church that goes through there. Like anybody can be involved in it if they mm -hmm. want to. And as far as what goes on there, there's just a lot of hustle and bustle. Like getting stuff like getting lighting cues set or making sure the cameras are ready to go if they want to be filmed. Um, just making sure all the tech stuff is in order so it'll work right. I mean, of course, nothing ever goes 100%, but you try as hard as you can to make it at least go like 90% right most mm -hmm. of the time. What, what are some of the things that will be coming up at Wealthy Theater? Well, right now we have River City Improv is a regular there. They come through um, not every week, but almost every week. Um, we have Pop Scholars coming through uh, next Tuesday. We're playing Die Hard for our Christmas movie this year, which I think is exciting. Uh, and much like so many other things too. Um, just need to go to our website and click on the calendar and just see what's going on. Just, mm -hmm. There's so many things. And check it out. Yeah. Uh, do you celebrate the holidays? I do not. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a, I guess when somebody asks me if I celebrate the holidays, the most that's the most diplomatic diplomatic answer I can give is that I don't uh, what I I guess how I would describe it is I exist in a space with other people who are celebrating it and that's fine with me mm -hmm. okay um, do you have family in the Grand Rapids area I do I have family living out in Sparta and Cedar Springs um, nobody in the metro area or in the city kind of just around town um, half of my family is here in West Michigan and the other half of my family is over on the east side in Detroit. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think about time to talk? I love it. Give the right answer. Yeah, no, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's, how do I say it? You haven't told me no yet as far as the set goes, so I love yeah. that. <laughs> right, right. But Tear it down. <laughs> what, I don't know if astonished is the right word, but what is just so, what I look forward to every week is, or every other week is just seeing who you bring in. You bring in so many interesting people and you, you know, I just kind of sit back and go, man, she knows a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> she knows everybody. <laughs> and it's also the people who never normally would get time in front of a camera, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I always find those are the people with the most interesting stories. Yeah. And honestly, when it comes down to it, I think that's what I love about it. It's okay. just these, you know, everyday people coming here, telling their stories and the things they're trying to accomplish in their life. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. And if people are interested, can they come down and uh, or call you maybe and ask for a tour just to check oh, things yeah. out? I mean, I give people tours even if they didn't come here for a tour in the first place. <laughs> yeah, right. I, uh, I love showing people everything that we do. I show them the studio, I show them the control room, I'll show them ICE. Uh, I tell them what we're all about and it's very exciting just because you can kind of see you know, like a little glimmer of light in their eyes as they're widening just a little bit when and you tell them what we can do here you know and you know they're just getting excited about that and the gears are starting to turn in their heads mm -hmm. and what they could possibly do here so yeah it's so interesting because how many times do people get to go to a TV station exactly and just check it out yeah or a radio station which is right down the hall yeah. WYCE 88.1 and just check things out and look at it and um, and I especially like to bring young people down and give them an idea of okay this is what it looks like and mm -hmm. this is all the things that happen if we're doing a live show the or you see on TV a live show these are all the crazy things <laughs> that happen <laughs> before the show and then we're all so calm like hey, Welcome to Time to Talk. But right before that, we've been running, and I'm telling people, over here, over there, I need this, I need it. Where's my shoes? Okay. <laughs> Some of everything is going on. The young people is the best part of it, too, because they get the most excited about it. And a lot of kids will just excitedly tell me about their ideas and like yeah. what kind of shows they want to have and she's like yeah you know you can do it here come on down do and it. they have some, some good good ideas too and I, I just want to say while I'm thinking about it that we appreciate the late great Dirk Coney mm -hmm. who started all of this for us really um, in the basement of, of his home many many years ago. He just had that vision for media and starting with television and saying this is what can happen, this is what we can do, and uh, it was just amazing, amazing. And he was just so ahead of his time, yes, and he loved television, he loved media, he went all around the country and even outside of the country letting people know what they could do uh, with cable television and just this world of he would love this world today where we're communicating online and because that was just starting to happen about the time he passed was and he was talking about the super highway and we were like what are you talking about <laughs> I feel that the biggest injustice of me working here was the fact that I yeah, oh my goodness, what a great guy. I believe it. An amazing guy, amazing guy. And I understand his daughter is involved with uh, Wolfie Theater. I oh, yeah, it. yes. Yeah, director there? Oh, yeah, about various that? projects and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, independent mm -hmm. stuff. So at least she gets to carry her dad's vision yeah. on. Yeah. Yes, and we appreciate that. Um, so, Will? We want to thank you for all that you do thank for you. Time to Talk. And then next, I'm going to mention Rob and Lena. I know they're busy, Newton, 
I know they're busy in the back, so I'm just going to mention what they do. But I want to thank you, Will, for being a great part of Time to Talk. And like I told everybody else, we're going to sign. <laughs> We're going to sign these. We're going to sign these after the show. <laughs> but thank you, Will. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. And keep up the good work with the set design. Oh, you know Appreciate I will. Appreciate you. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Public access is accessibility, especially when we're talking about GRTV. It's a public format. Um, it's available to just about anyone, especially like local to Grand Rapids, but it's accessible, it's inclusive, it's educational, and it does something for the greater public good. Public access um, in Grand Rapids is so vital to our community. It helps make us vibrant because there's so much going on and there's so much talent here in Grand Rapids and there's so many viewpoints and so many services. So having public access, that's an opportunity for people to become aware of what's going on. It also gives people an opportunity to learn. Where else can you go and learn how to do television. It's available. I wish people knew more about it because it's a really cool, unique thing that I think Grand Rapids has. It serves a purpose in the community and will always serve uh, as a voice in the community and I hope it's, you know, it's always going to be here and even expands more so. What I see uh, in the future of public access is that we're going to tap into more of the technology that's out there and expand our horizons in whatever way that might be. I would just like to thank all of our viewers uh, who watch GRTV and all the people who support GRTV in so many different ways. And we need to continue getting that support so that we can always stay on the air and always hear your voice. All right, we've been thanking our crew members today, and there are some crew members that aren't here with us today, but we want to thank them. want to thank Yvette Mayfield, uh, who uh, was my stylist, personal stylist and makeup artist, and um, she, when she had the time, would go and select different clothes from for me and get everything all together. Appreciate her. Appreciate Tam, Miss Tammy Lee as well, who just uh, keeps me uplifted and personal assistant and um, just all around positive person. We want to thank our, our receptionist right here at the front desk uh, of Community Media Center, Beth Wicker Rink. I appreciate her because when my guests come in, she's the first person they see. And so it's nice that she's pleasant. She has this wonderful smile and welcomes my guests. That means a lot to me uh, because you don't need anybody coming in and have somebody be rude to them. Uh, many times the guests already are a little nervous about being on TV. And so, you know, that's good that somebody is nice to them. Uh, many times she'll walk them on back and appreciate that as well. And then I want to make sure there's nobody in the back room that uh, I've missed, and I, if so please come on out. But as I mentioned before the break, we have Rob and Lena Newton. They're, they're working uh, in our control room right now. So, but we just want to be sure to recognize them. Now, I, we all go to church together. Um, at 
Southeast Church of Christ, where Dr. Paul Hubbard Jr. is our minister. And so we know each other on that level. But also Rob used to direct my show. He's been in the corporate world for 30 years and he retired. And just as I told Penda, when you tell me I'm retiring and I want to help you on your show, you only got to tell me that one time. And so Rob told me that, and he just retired um, in September, I believe. And I said, Rob, you ready? He said, yes. And Lena, his wife as well, they both come and they help me so much with whatever it is that I need them to do here at Time to Talk. And Rob actually helped me 30 years ago when my granddaughter was just a little bitty baby and now she's 24 and we would bring her to the show too. I'm telling you, everybody got to get involved in time to talk and so that's what we did. And then my son Stephen uh, Bryant and my daughter Stephanie Hines, she's all, they've also been a part of time to talk as well. And then Lena also makes sure things are right and welcomes our guests and make sure that they're comfortable and has what they need. So I appreciate all my time to talk crew.